Now, whitetail habitat solutions were all about whitetail strategy, and that's you know a big part of everything we do. Uh, it's a, it's my love, you know, my uh, love of everything whitetails and improving whitetail habitat, how to hunt them, how to hunt them based on the weather. But if you're creating a good whitetail property, there's a lot you can do for other wildlife species. And so, you know, we, we do that. My first love was small game hunting. No one in my family hunted. So pellet gun, squirrel, rabbit, that was what we uh, hunted for back in the day when we were really young and uh, fond memories. And so kind of building habitat for other wildlife species brings me back to my roots. And at the same time, it's what I really enjoy on my property, even the UP of Michigan back in the late 90s, 2000s, we had a lot of snowshoe rabbits. And so really opening up jack pine stands so the boughs were down, that's where they lived during the, during the winter time, we actually ran beagles. Um, really have always come back to rabbits back out here. We just had an aspen cutting down here that will uh, create really good habitat with grouse. We're actually seeing grouse populations increase on the property, which is awesome. And we're actually standing in a snowed out, drifted uh, uh, expanse of switchgrass right here. And we get these hard winds from the west coming over. And right here, I'm not sure how deep it is, but it's, you know, it's about to my knees <laughs> right in this location. So I'm just standing up on the cross, but it just gets blanketed right here and blasted. And so we have the rabbits that relate to the switch. We have these briars right here, but briars alone aren't great, aren't good enough because they, those rabbits can still get picked off from above with birds of prey. Uh, we have lots of hawks around here, owls, whatever it might be. So we're making rabbit huts. And we put rabbit huts out on the property. We have about 10, 12 right now. Dylan asked me how many when we were coming out here, and I don't know. We just we made another one across the property. We made a lot last year. But bottom line is we're making rabbit huts so that when it gets to this time of year, and a lot of covers crusted over. A lot of brush piles are so full of snow, rabbits don't seem to have a place to hide. And that's where the population of rabbits decreases as the winter progresses. We have a long winter right now. Uh, I believe it's March 13th today. So we're still in, you know, this deep of snow. It's, and it goes deeper than this. I can guarantee there's crust down here from, that I'm digging through right now that's from December because we haven't had really that many warm-ups. You know, we just keep going down in this hole right here. It's, it's a long ways down. So as the snow deepens, it's not like the rabbits tunnel through the snow. They'll tunnel in and out of cover. A lot of times it gets so deep, they just have nowhere to go. So I want to make sure that the rabbits have sufficient cover here. So we're picking a spot here that's behind and between briars. It's alongside our switchgrass here that'll be six, seven feet tall. We're letting this switchgrass go this year. We've mowed it, we've kept it a little bit shorter. We've controlled weeds and now it's at that point where we can let it go. It'll be six, seven feet tall. This will be the third year growth. It's gonna be beautiful. We put this in without any tillage equipment. We actually have a video out tomorrow, uh, easy switchgrass recipe. And it is easy to plant if you follow the steps. And it's just like this. If you follow the steps for creating rabbit habitat, rabbitat, you'll be able to have uh, rabbits on your property. So we have the switchgrass flanking this. We have briar, so it's already a good spot anyways. And again, we just wanna um, maintain more of a consistent level of rabbits throughout, throughout the winter time. And so in this little spot back here, right behind me, we have two box elder clusters, which are perfect because I want some support right above the rabbit hut that we're creating so that you have regeneration and it creates that living bush on top. That's blocking a lot of weather, rain, wind, moisture from seeping through. So that's that, that portion of the habitat that we're cutting. We want those to hinge over. It's great material for us right here. And then we're using three pallets. And with the seed company, we always have pallets coming in and out. So really easy for us to grab pallets and make these. We're using three pallets high. Now some stack those on cinder blocks. I don't think that's a bad idea. It's one more level for rabbits to crawl under, but don't just use one or two pallets, use at least three. And that way you have that structure. You have young rabbits who can go up different levels, escape from predators. We've had coyotes come put their noses up to it. They can't get in. Not something they can get into very easily. So um, we're starting there. Now some people talk about putting a tin roof over it. We have rattlesnakes around here. We haven't seen any on the property yet. Neighbor sees them quite often. He, often he walks on these roads around here, uh, long walks on the dirt road. He knows where they live. So he almost knows them by name. But we put that tin over these, the top of these rabbits, 
that warmth is a great spot, especially with the sun right here in the grass for rattlesnakes. We don't want to really promote rattlesnake habitat. Maybe you're a biologist out there that loves rattlesnakes and uh, and I just don't want them on our property. I don't, I don't want them around. I don't want to live with them. I don't want to have to worry about them. And uh, if we have them, great. You know, I know they're uh, endangered or rare, but at the same time, I, uh, I don't want to necessarily promote snake habitat. I'd rather promote rabbitat, grouse, turkey, birds, butterflies, and bees, and then also deer, of course. So we're gonna stick those pallets back in there. I'm gonna start by knocking down that timber over the top, and then we're gonna use larger adjacent timber to cut down and fold over the top of that. So by the time we're done, we have three pallets stacked on top of each other. We have a living bush on, on top, and we find the rabbits typically start to use them immediately. So we're gonna get to making this right now, and uh, we'll follow up at the end when we're finished. Usually takes us 20 minutes, a half hour at the most, and uh, we'll be on to shooting other videos, but uh, I wanna wrap this up and show you guys what it looks like, and, uh, and again, we'll have rabbits using it right away, so we get to work. Well, we just finished up the rabbit hut, and um, worked out really well. We got a uh, box elder that we were able to fan both ways over the top, and those would literally turn, on, turn into living bushes. The box elder shoots will, uh, get up to six, seven feet tall just this year. It's sandwiched in between these briars. And then I went in the back. There's a little bit of basswood, cherry, and aspen. And I cut a lot of that down too, making one giant brush pile here. And you can see this area I just cut is probably 20 yards to 30 yards wide and another 20 yards deep. So while we're creating habitat for rabbits in this location, it's adjacent to the switchgrass. This is hardwood regeneration and briar, briars, which is perfect for turkey nesting. So that really helps this area. Also, this is a great spot now for grouse habitat with the regeneration of the aspen and the regeneration of the hardwood. You have the rabbits too. So this really helps out a lot of species. Not to mention, this is along a long strip, like I said, of switchgrass. The switchgrass goes along these power lines, probably 250 yards long. And then we have an access right up here. So what that does is it creates a barrier and a living brush barrier to where we have really good bedding down at a bench about 70, 80 yards from here. So this gives us a lot better ability to go right along this edge. We have the switchgrass edge, the hardwood regen edge. It's a great visual block, but again, great rabbit habitat, turkey nesting, grouse, deer cover. We have a food plot that's about 100 yards over this way. So this is a great area of protection for deer, especially does and fawns that might be bedded down below. We have a really cool stand location right down here. This helps really put the emphasis on that back bedding inch bench back there, lets more sunlight into this entire wood lot. We got a lot, a lot of these uh, exterior branches down. So this, is accomplish, this accomplishes a lot more than certainly deer habitat, of course, but even rabbit habitat. It's part of the big picture of overall management on the, the property. And I hope that you can actually make a rabbit hut, make some rabbit hat on your land this year and enjoy the fruits of, you know, in this case, getting me back to my roots when I was a kid. And you can bet with Jackson being a young little baby right now, he'll celebrate his, his uh, first birthday here in a little bit. You can bet I can't wait to take him out and do some small game hunting on the land someday and enjoy that with my son, have family, friends come over, my older kids and, uh, Hunting rabbits is a big part of that. I hope it can be a big part of your family hunt this fall. You can create some great habitat like this for all species at the same time. Hey, I'm really excited to introduce to you our Hills and Thermals web class. It's something we worked on all year. We're trying to put lots of facets of scouting, aerial imagery, diagrams on the whiteboard to really teach you how the wind moves through hills and how you should find bedding areas, how it relates to deer movements in general, how that relates to, this is a bedding area stand, this is a food source afternoon stand. We really tried to put this together and offer you a complete picture of how to navigate hills and find better success consistently where you hunt.